Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Oh, glary, glary, glary. What have you guys sent me today? Just in case you're new to the channel, I'm actually one of the original guys that kind of, you know, reviewed the glary guitars. I think the only well-known YouTuber before me to do them is a guy called Guitar Max, you know, the one that buried his Gibson in the desert and everybody's freaking out thinking it's a real Gibson. But Glary asked me to do a review of this new bass guitar that they have going on here. And you'll notice this is a slightly different packaging than they've done before. So the box is the same, but it looks like they're kind of going what the Chibson guys do when they do just a styrofoam box. But on the outside, we've now got a light cardboard box. It's nothing heavy duty or anything, but that's cool to see that they're uh, improving their packaging. But just a full disclosure here, I got this guitar for free and we're just going to review it based on its own merits here. And just in case you're not familiar with what Glary is, it's a discount brand of guitars from China. Basically, they're ripping off popular designs, but they're making it incredibly affordable. Like this bass right here, it's called the GIB. I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be because it's basically just a rip off of an Ibanez guitar. But this time I decided to go with what they call burly wood. I'm not exactly entirely too sure what that is, but it usually means you have this really beautiful wood grain. If I'm being honest with you, it almost kind of looks like Carina, the way that it has a dark area. If I remember correctly, that's where like bacteria is growing in the wood and that's why it turns darker. This thing looks pretty cool, but first impressions, my goodness, this thing is light. All the weight on this is definitely in the neck. The action is amazing on this thing. Like it actually almost might be too low. And I'm noticing that the nut, it's not their finest hour. It looks like they just kind of quickly shaved it off at the edge there. But that's the only thing that really jumps out at me at first. So lightweight, pretty decent build quality. It looks like it survived the trip. You also get a nice little dust cover gig bag. Despite this one not actually coming with an amp, they give you a lead anyways, as well as the Allen key to adjust your truss rod. And then you can see a very small one right here to adjust your action. And heck, they even give you a little strap. These are just a nice little freebie things. Yeah, we're probably gonna have to raise that action a little bit. So let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench and take a look at its individual parts. While I'm getting this base around, I thought we'd check out Glary's website just to see if there's any new items. And I was baffled at how much has changed since the last time I looked at these. So the first thing is they have a saxophone. Who wants to see the Glary saxophone review? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the most expensive thing on their website at 200 bucks though. But things that you're going to be curious about is they now offer strings. They used to just sell these ukulele strings, but now they have gotten their bass, electric, and acoustic guitar strings. Now you're going to notice, huh? $7.99 for electric guitar strings, that's like top dollar. But $7.99 for a set of bass strings, that's like dirt cheap. Most people don't seem that impressed with their strings, but they get you by if you just need something on your instrument. And look, you can now buy the amps by themselves. Nothing too much has changed here in electric guitar world, except one thing. Their left-handed electric guitars has grown a lot. Last time we had checked with them, I think they offered this one and that one, but now they've added four new ones. So you've got the jazz bass setup, and it looks like they're going to start doing some cool Stratocasters. But then I checked out the bass guitars, and ah, Glary, how could you do this to me? <laughs> The five string was not on the website when they asked me what bass I wanted. I probably would have went with the five string because it was a little bit different. But they've got two new five strings. So you've got like a Fender Jazz bass style here and then the more Ibanez style right there. But what kind of surprised me to see is they turned their Burning Fire model into a bass. Seeing as the Burning Fire was actually kind of a small guitar, it's much smaller than you would expect. I'm curious if they made that bigger for the bass or not. That's gonna wrap up about everything I saw that was new on the website. Let's go ahead and check out this four string bass. Inside the Glary GIB. It's such a beautiful looking guitar. Now that we've got our slightly higher quality camera, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I love the dark and light streaks. I mean, this works for me on a bass. However, on a guitar, I don't know if I would like it as much. It's just kind of a cool little color. But take a look at this arm contour right here. It's not quite as subtle on like a Stratocaster. It's like complete angled. That's kind of interesting. 
But underneath the pickups here, I mean, there's not too much going on here. You just got your cheapy pickups in here. That blue one's connected to here, and then you got a yellow wire that just runs into your control cavity here. Same thing with this, it's got the red wire. So this is like a blending of a P bass and a jazz bass. And these guys just mount to the body with screws right here, here, and there. And then you can see all the screws they used. What I found interesting was there's only springs for this one and that one. They don't have springs on all four locations. I'm not sure if that's how other pickups are or not, but these both have springs. Here's what your bridge looks like. It's secured to the body by seven screws, which I was kind of surprised about. That's a lot of screws for one of these. I was expecting this to be much more lighter in weight than it is, but I mean, it's not super heavy or anything. Only other thing to see there is their grounding wire coming through. And for our control knobs, you have four knurled metal knobs. And they turn pretty all right. They're a little bit stiffer. By no means are they hard to turn. A bit noisy. But this is advertised as a basswood body. Then you get a rosewood fretboard with a maple neck. The one thing that's always been pretty consistent on Glary guitars is the fret work. It's always good, like you don't have fret sprout or anything. This is the first Glary that I've had that did have a little bit of fret sprout. So your first one's good, second's good, third's good, fourth, you just start to feel it a little bit. Remember how in the unboxing segment I said this area was really rough? All I had to do is take a little bit of sandpaper and now this is super smooth, I like that. I also polished the frets up with a little bit of steel wool and conditioned the fretboard, but honestly, it didn't really need it. These frets aren't that much more shiny than they were when this first came out, but it is a fairly new design, so it's probably a newer Glary guitar. It is a 24 fret bass. I think they said they were aiming for 34 inch scale length, but let's check the neck specs. I get a nut width of 1.63 inches, and that increases to 2.16 at the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.88, and by the 12th, 0.95. Pretty much all the Glary guitars have huge baseball bat necks. This one's still big, but it's not quite as full feeling as the others. Now moving on to the headstock. I think Glary might get in trouble for this one. If you check out my Glary Stratocaster review, notice how the headstocks have changed quite a bit, probably because Fender's saying, hey, you can't do that. This is really close to the Ibanez shape, but it looks fantastic, doesn't it? But you have your truss rod adjustment right in here. I'm really impressed with the quality of these tuners. I mean, they look good and they feel good. Moving on to the back side, nothing too much to see here. You don't have a neck plate or anything. It's just four screws straight on to bolt the neck on. And then you've got this nice and rounded off so it'll be comfortable to play higher up in the registers. You could probably even take a little bit of sandpaper and smooth this edge out a little bit. But besides that, just beautiful wood grain here and you've got your strap buttons in your normal locations well as a little belly carve right there. And here's what your electronics look like. Definitely nothing fancy by any means, but it should work. Output jack is right there on the side. As with all Glary products, they have a really thin satin finish over the backs of the necks. I mean, it's so thin to the point where you think you're just playing a raw maple neck, but you're not. There's a small light coating over it. Just for fun, I did a little bit of sanding right there so you can see what a raw maple would look like versus the slight finish that's over it. What I find really cool here is the uh, scarf joint, how they join the top of the headstock onto the neck. You've got like really plain looking maple right here, but then you get switched into this super grainy stuff. It's kind of a, an interesting look, but I like it. It gives the headstock character. I wish the whole neck was like that. That's kind of cool. This weight is by no means 100% accurate because I'm kind of holding the neck up a little just bit just to get it balanced, but you know, it's around five and a half pounds, I would say, six pounds. It's really lightweight, like ridiculously lightweight. Let's go ahead and plug it in and hear how it sounds. So now the moment of truth. How neck heavy is this thing? Ah, oh. <laughs> I was surprised. There's actually not much neck dive at all. Like this isn't even a super grippy shirt or strap or anything. It's just about where I would want my base to be. So despite the neck being way heavier than the body, for whatever reason, on this design, it works. So. so for this demo, each pickup, I'm gonna do a different little riff. I'm gonna play it in different styles with a pick, with fingers, palm muted. I'll even try to do some slap for you, just so you can kind of get an idea of what tones will come out of this glary gib.
Now that we've got a chance to see how it was made and how it sounds, what are my final thoughts on this thing? I definitely liked it better than the Glary P bass style because there's a few refinements that they did with this new body shape that really make it that much better. So I made a little list of pros and cons to this thing for you guys to consider. So when I got this guitar, it needed a little bit of setup work. I'm not talking extreme setup work because I'm not a super luthier guy. If I can do it, you can definitely do it too. So the first thing I actually had to correct is the neck was just slightly back bowed. Remember how it had crazily low action? That's because the neck was, you know, bending towards the strings. So I gave it a little bit of relief just by doing a light truss rod adjustment. We're talking an eighth of a turn. I fixed this bass up pretty good. I actually did not even touch the action adjustments down here. It was just a neck adjustment. As you can hear right now, it's much less buzzy. However, I think I do need to raise the low E string up just a hair because it's a little bit too buzzy around that third fret. And as we were talking about on the bench, I did a little bit of sandpapering right here to make sure that was all flush and feeling good while you're playing it. This bass does have a little bit of fret sprout. Now, once I actually started playing it, did I ever notice it? No, but I do want you to know that this one did have it because that's the first Glary I've had that did have that slight issue. And speaking of issues that Glaries are known for, the output jacks are never very good in these things. They'll usually cut out on you when you're moving around. So if you're watching this Glary, maybe upgrade your output jacks to something a little bit nicer because that's something I notice in just about every single Glary. And there's always a very light grounding hum to their pickups. I know somebody was talking about how to fix that, like something's not grounded properly on these guys. So that's something else I would encourage them to look into. And there were a few minor defects here as far as the finish goes. Like for example, right here, you can see where the clear coat spilled over into the satin finish. And there's like a little area right here that wasn't quite sanded smooth. But those are some very small nitpicky things we're talking about here. For $90, I'm willing to accept these very small flaws, but here's what this bass does really good. It's cool. I mean, look at this thing. Does this not look like a higher end bass than it really is? Not only do you have the cool wood grain as we were talking about, and yeah, we're kind of stealing Ibanez's body style here. And I guess you could even say you're kind of stealing their headstock. It almost looks slightly PRS in style, but this works. You got straight string pull. It stayed in tune very well. And I really like the tuners on this thing. They feel solid. And on top of that, the tones, they weren't half bad for a $90 bass guitar. I mean, it's nothing to write home about, but you do have the option between like kind of like a neck pickup style and a bridge pickup style with the controls for each. Which by the way, was volume tone, volume tone for each of the pickups. So you can kind of blend them together as well. And I was absolutely baffled that this thing actually was balanced because the last P bass style they had was definitely not balanced at all. <laughs> So this fact in general, I think makes this a great modifying platform. If you wanna put higher end pickups in here or learn to do like soldering work and all these other minor things, because anything that is wrong with this is easily fixable with very minimal skill. So for once you could have a really lightweight base and not have to pay with neck dive. 
But the last point I want to make here is I want to commend them for their new neck profile on this. I'm not sure if that's just how Ibanez does theirs, but Glary's finally moved away from that huge baseball bat neck. I mean, this is still a big neck. It's probably a little bit too big for kids, but it's more like a D-shaped profile now, and it's not quite as thick. Their P base had this really full C-shaped neck profile, and it's super thick. Like, it's so thick, by the time you're at the 12th fret, it's like, Oh, this is too much, too much. So I hope you can kind of see the differences in that. This is a much more comfortable guitar to play. And I kind of kept this bass around thinking, eh, if I ever need a bass, I can grab it, but I'm definitely going to be moving this one on. And keeping this one as my bass just to have around to have a bass. So if you're interested in checking out a Glary for yourself, you can follow that link in the description that will support the channel and pick yourself up one of these things. Or if not, we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.